Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we gather together to celebrate this 33rd Sunday of the year. Today we hear the Lord speaking about end times. We hear him speaking about persecution. And so we come before the Lord knowing that at times we are all afraid of something. We are afraid of the future. And this often causes us to fall and to feel weak. And let's bring the weakness of our own lives and our failures before our God. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Preserve, Preserve me, O God, God for, for in you I take refuge. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup, you yourself who secure my lot. I keep the Lord before me always. With him at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Preserve, Preserve me, O God, God, for in you, you I take, take refuge. refuge. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad, even my flesh shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to hell, nor let your Holy One see corruption. Preserve, Preserve me, O God, God, for in you I take, take refuge. refuge. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, 
at your right hand, bliss forever. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God than to wait until his enemies should be made a stool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Watch at all times, praying, that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after that great tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken, and they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The world of apocalyptic literature, with its various and fantastic imagery, is often a bit alien and bewildering to us. We don't live in that world. That book of Daniel that we hear from this weekend contains several of those kinds of passages. And many of those passages were written to encourage readers at that time because they faced a crisis of one sort or another. And this weekend's gospel from the 13th chapter of Mark is one of the most difficult passages, I think, in Mark to understand. And it too has a kind of apocalyptic feel to it. And it is often interpreted as announcing the end of the world. Jesus saying that we don't know the hour. Not even he knows, only the Father knows. In fact, that 13th chapter of Mark's Gospel is often called the Little Apocalypse. Like the book of Daniel or the book of Revelation, it focuses on those 
who are being persecuted and tries to give them some encouragement. But you know, friends, often when we are faced with apocalyptic literature, we are dealing with one single theme. And then it's not so difficult to understand. It seems to me that that theme is the meaning of life itself. What is the real meaning of life? What is the real meaning of faith when we face difficulties and struggles? Many people have been asking that question over the last almost two years now as we face the COVID pandemic. What is the meaning of my life? What is the meaning of life? We have, at the very best of times, a tendency to worry and stress about life and about our future. And indeed, there is lots that we should and could stress about. However, notice a subtle thing that Jesus does in the Scriptures. He uses all the predictions of the so-called bad things that could happen and maybe even will happen as a basis for hope, as a basis for our Christian hope. You see, Jesus wants us to take consolation from his words rather than allow them to distress us. And I know sometimes in, in some churches, these words are often used to put the fear of God into people. And that's not what Jesus wants to do. What I think Jesus really wants to say is, when you see these things happening, when you hear or know that you are near the gates, to use that language, amen, I say to you, this generation will pass away and all these things that have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. What Jesus says is, if you trust in me, no matter what happens, the worst will never happen. Mark's Gospel teaches us that if we follow Jesus, if we want to be followers of Jesus, we will face trials and difficulties. We will at times even feel like we are being tested. The trials and testing by the, by the ordinary routines of our human existence. However, whatever form those trials or those tests take, Mark tells us that if we remain vigilant, if we try to remain in the Word, in Jesus Himself, and not allow our hearts and our minds to be divided, we will get through those trials and that testing. We shall face challenges, but we should not let them get us down. For Jesus has changed forever the context in which our trials and our testing occur. He has, we are told in that second reading that we heard from Hebrews today, faced these trials and this testing himself. I want to suggest to you that there are two invitations for us this weekend. Simple invitations. The first one is that we are invited to consider and become aware of what we are distressed about now, at this time. Maybe you are still distressed by COVID. Maybe you're distressed by the future of our country after these recent government elections. Maybe you're concerned about money or success at work or at school or university. Maybe you have concerns about health, maybe addiction, maybe job security, maybe family or relationships. Maybe you find yourself distressed by anger or by grief. You see, our ability to name where we find ourselves, what we feel, is important because that's the first step to seeing hope in our situation. Where 
do you find yourself right now? What distresses you the most? The second invitation. Once we are able to name what distresses us, we're invited to step back and to see the bigger picture. Because we can so often lose sight when we are sucked into what we personally are distressed about. And we should not lose sight of the fact that Jesus has been where we are, and Jesus himself shows us that we can overcome our worries and our distresses, that we can find meaning in our lives despite our worries and our distresses. If we stay focused on him, because his word, he tells us in today's gospel, will never pass away. He will never pass away. And so we will face setbacks and losses. Notice Jesus never promises us no setbacks and no losses. Jesus doesn't promise us no tragedies in life. But Jesus does promise us that we are never alone. And that perhaps is our biggest temptation, to allow ourselves to think and feel that we are abandoned, that we are alone. We are, Jesus assures us, never alone. And so as companions in faith, as followers of the Lord, we're invited each day to respond to the dialectics of gloom and of hope in ourselves and in our world. There is gloom, but there is also great hope if we ground ourselves in Jesus, the Word of God, who will never pass away. And not just ground ourselves in that Word, but draw life from Jesus, the Word. And that, friends, is the good news of our faith. Nothing can and will overcome us, as hard as what it may be at times, if we are rooted in the Lord Jesus, who will never pass away. Let's respond to God's word now by making a profession of faith, and let's pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus is God's Word living amongst us and present to us. Let's use our words now to make known what we need to the living Word. Let us pray that we would be able to name all which distresses us so that we can hand our burdens over to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray that all that distresses us would still bear faithful witness to the good news of Jesus Christ in our world today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray that we and all the people of our time would not lose hope in the goodness and meaning of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who feel confused and lost, that they would find consolation and joy in Jesus, 
the word of God, who helps us overcome all we struggle with. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all leaders that they would seek to truly serve and not to be served. We pray for an end to corruption, infighting and cadre deployment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all who bear the distress and pain of abuse, physical and psychological. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the poor and marginalized, those who feel shunned by our community and places of worship, that they would, through us, find welcome and hospitality. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our needs mo known to you, our needs and the needs of all our sisters and brothers. And we make them through Christ Jesus, your Son, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts and prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks, with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end, we acclaim. Holy. Holy. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought to us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, 
whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the cup of blessing in his hands, and confessing your mercy, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask you to accept us also together with your Son, and in the saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue and all who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. It was the Lord Jesus who taught us to call on God, and so we pray. Our Amen. Father, who Amen. art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let's take time now to pray for peace in our own hearts, in our families, our communities, our country, and in the whole world. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should be under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But in blood of Christ, bring us all to life everlasting. 
Amen. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace to love and serve God by loving and serving one another. Thanks be to God.